All right, what is up, guys? We are back with round four of the Brooklyn Premier Challenge out here in Brooklyn, New York. I am your commentator, Aaron Cybertron Zhang, and right now we have three, two three and O players um, who might not as be as well known, but it'd be exciting to feature them. On top, you see Lightcore Nicholas Borgi, who actually finished in the top eight at the Philadelphia Regional Championships. Uh, we actually played in Top Cut, but he's got a team of Salmons, Clefairy, um, Scrafty, Thunderous T, Heatron, and Terrakion. So uh, I think immediately the Clefairy Salmons duo comes out. Uh, of course, Clefairy and its uh, evolution Clefable have been really popular in this season of VGC uh, because of the ability to redirect and the immense bulk it has. Uh, now, the other team, which obviously not on the screen, Remy's team, is Mega Altaria, Bisharp, Rotom He, Amoongus, Landers T, and Suicune. So, Mega Altaria obviously standing out immediately because it's not exactly the most common Mega Evolution we see in VGC. Um, hasn't really had any notable finishes at any high level tournaments, so it'll be cool to see how Remy utilizes it on his team. Now, I think one thing that should be noted is the redirection on both of these players' teams. Remy opted for Amoongus, which has been one of the most redirection users ever since it was first introduced to VGC in 2011. Always ha has strong finishes at World Championships and whatnot. Uh, whereas Nicholas opting for the Clefairy, obviously. So redirection is really good in VGC in general because of the ability to help support its partners in setting up attacks and whatnot. Um, and Mega Altaria, definitely a Pokemon that appreciates redirection because you know you want to get those super effective attacks redirected away from it. But we are going to get into this battle, and I'm very excited to see how it plays out because Mega Altaria, like I mentioned, not a Mega we see very often. In the last round, you know, we saw two Charizard Xs go against uh, each other, so it's really cool to see all these unique Mega Egg evolutions being used already. So Remy's going to end up leading with Bisharp and Amoongus as Nicholas goes with his Salamence and Heatran. That Salamence is going to get the Intimidate off and that will intimidate the uh, Bisharp, uh, obviously giving it a Defiant boost. But right now there's a Heatran staring down at Bisharp and Amoongus and Heatran really appreciates that matchup. So that Bisharp does get a free attack boost, putting it at plus one after the Defiant boost. And... Um, Amoongus really does not like being here right now. Salamence, probably Mega Salamence. Uh, right now, we don't know whether Nicholas is running the physical set, which tends to be more common. You know, Double Edge, Dragon Dance, Earthquake, Protect. Sometimes we do see Roost over Earthquake on that set, but uh, of course, because of Mega Salamence's ability Aerialate, Aerial excuse me, Double Edge would be able to knock out the Amoongus immediately. Uh, sometimes Bishop do like to run a lot of speed, specifically to outspeed Heatrans, but. First of all, we don't know how fast the Bisharp is, we don't know how fast the Heatran is. So right now, if you're Remy, you were probably, um, even though you got that Defiant boost, it's still a very difficult situation for you to be in, just because you're staring down a Salamence and a Heatran. So I think Nicholas did a good job, knowing that it was okay leading uh, into Bisharp, because Heatran beats Bisharp. It's one of the cases where it would be really good if, you know, Nicholas didn't bring that Heatran, but smart decision for him there. Um, so Salamence here is going to choose the Mega Evolve, of course that is going to give it more speed, uh, that's really important. Mega Salamence often chosen for how fast it is, even with that admin nature. And wow, no protects, no switch outs, we just see both players opting for an attack. Return comes straight out from that Mega Salamence, so not Double Edge, which is, uh, I'd say, a bit more common. And that return, of course, is going to be uh, Flying type, and the Bisharp is actually faster than the Heatran. Gets that knockoff off, but not enough to knock it out, unfortunately, as Heatwave comes out. And Bisharp didn't take any Life Orb recoil, so presumably it is Focus Sashed, as it does reveal the Sash here. Um, as we actually saw the Heatran had the Life Orb. So... Remy lost his Amoongus, and the Bisharp is down to 1 HP now, so uh, a pretty scary position for him to be in right now, but still not over. Lander's T is going to come in, that's going to intimidate the Salamence, and of course, Salamence being physical, that is going to decrease its attack. Uh, and it's very important to note that the Bisharp is faster than the Heatran, but now we're in an interesting position. Uh, Salamence, you know, will take a lot of damage from Sucker Punch, but because there's no Life Orb uh, boost, it's not actually, I don't think, enough to knock out the Salamence. So, uh, right now, I mean, knowing the Heatran is also slower than the Bisharp is potentially scary. Uh, we do see the Protect come out of Heatran, does not want to get knocked out by this Bisharp here, so it's just going to try to avoid some damage, but the Sucker Punch comes out, and it does fail, so targeting the Heatran there, or potentially dra- Oh, the miss! And yeah, it targeted on the Salamence, but it is going to be able to get that Dragon Dance up, so that's going to negate the Intimidate boost and give it a plus one speed boost. And, you know, we did see Lander's team move first, so presumably Choice Scarf there, and that was a unfortunate miss because Rockside probably a 2-8 KO. 
So a difficult position for Remy. Uh, he really needed, I think, that Rock Slide to hit. Bishop, of course, still has that Defiant Boost though, so it's not over, but Rock Slide will most likely not be able to knock out Nicholas's Heatran because of the spread damage. Uh, you know, Lander's T, it likes using Rock Slide, but it the spread damage heavily reduces the damage there. We do see a Sucker Punch, but that's not enough to knock out Solomon. Solomon's going for the return, and Rock Slide comes straight out. So that's probably going to knock out Solomon's. We'll see if it's enough to knock out the Heatran. And it's not enough to knock out either, as it even gets a critical hit there against the Heatran. Heatran going to go straight for that Earth Power, not wanting to risk Heat Wave missing, and that is going to be able to knock out the Bisharp. So, a pretty big turn there. I don't think Nicholas was anticipating both of his Pokemon surviving Rock Slide. I know I wasn't expecting the Salamence to survive there, and it does show how big that miss was earlier on. Altaria does make its appearance here, um, but right now it's a very scary position for Remy, because Nicholas' Salamence is at plus one speed, should be able to outspeed that uh, Lander C and just knock it out immediately. So, yeah, you know, Nicholas still has two Pokemon in the back. This Landers team most likely going to go down this turn as well, and things are not looking very good for Remy. Of course, things are still possible, but the missing a KO on both of those Pokemon was definitely pretty big. Like, I think if you were able to Rock Slide KO both, you know, with Rock Slide you can always get flinches and whatnot, but all Nicholas has to do right now is target down the uh, Landers team with a return. Uh, he's going to protect here with Heatran once again. I'm not sure if that's the best play here because at this point Heatran's done his job and you should just sack it. But we do see the return into Lander's T and it is 1-4 at this point so uh, it's very difficult to anticipate Alterio pulling it through here as Hyper Voice does come out and knock out the Salamence. One of the merits however of keeping Heatran uh, in the game at this point is for the spread damage. Depends on what Nicholas has in the back, so at this point, you know, you are able to make sure spread damage lasts a bit longer, uh, just because Hyper Voice's power, of course, is decreased when you have spread damage. We do see Hercules the Scrafty coming in, not exactly the most ideal Pokemon to have against Altaria, so maybe it's actually not over yet. I'm wondering what Nicholas has in the back, but you would think he would keep a Pokemon that has a good matchup against that Altaria, but uh, this should be an interesting finish in the match. Scrafty, of course, is a Pokemon that often likes to use Fake Out, so we might just see a Fake Out here, as he trying to actually pulls out the switch into... The last Pokemon, this is actually going to be very important, it is going to be that Thunderous T. It is actually possible right now for Remy to pull it back with this uh, Mega Altaria, so despite it being a 1-4 lead uh, for Nicholas at one point, it's still not over yet. Uh, he's basically going to have to rely on Hyper Voices at this point, and you do see why Nicholas just didn't give up the Heatran earlier on. He knew he had Scrafty in the back, which does not fare well against Hyper Voice, so uh, in retrospect, it was actually a good decision from him to keep the Heatran, given that he knew the Pokemon in the back. Not exactly the most ideal Pokemon to have against a Mega Alteria. I think one of the merits Mega Alteria has in this format uh, is the ability to really take attacks pretty well. Scrafty is going to switch out, so that is going to reset Intimidate, which obviously doesn't matter, but more importantly, allows Nicholas to get another Fake Out off. Heatran comes in here, and we actually see the Hidden Power coming out from Thunderous, and it does outspeed Altaria. That does put it in KO range, so oh, a critical hit. That might have actually mattered. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, as, actually, Hyper Voice fails to knock out the Heatran as well. I think if the crit did not happen there, uh, Remy actually could have won. Um because he could have just gone for another Hyper Voice's following turn, which would have knocked out both Pokemon, given you see how much damage there was there. So, unfortunately, these late-game crits, I remember in the last uh, round, we also saw that. Uh, really, really making a big difference there. I think, had HP not crit there, uh, it would have been able to take another one, and potentially Remy could have won. But, unfortunately, Thunderous is going to get another hidden power off, and that is going to take out Altaria. So, Nicholas Borgi on the top is able to seal up the game. Really, really well played, I thought, but at the same time, Remy conserving that Mega Altaria was uh, well done. Unfortunately, though, that critical hit taking out any chances he had of pulling it back. But I thought Nicholas played the first couple of turns very well, especially, uh, you know, knowing it'd be okay to lead Intimidate against the Bishrap when you have Heatran out. Though I'm sure he was not anticipating the Bishrap being faster than Heatran, so that was interesting to know. But, you know, that's Pokemon for you. Great match played by both players. It would have been really cool to see Remy pull it back with the Mega Alteria 1 on 4, but, you know, it is what it is. And I thought Nicholas played well for the majority of the game. So, that is up for round 4. Round 5 should be up shortly, so we'll be taking a short bake. And until then, I'll see you guys back in.